Display the reconstruction space for the crime scene. Touch the panel. Yeah. Is this some kind of virtual reality? <laughs> it looks just like the prof's house. By the way, Hal, the simulation system is the result of your ability. Memory diving. Being patched into the AD system. Your hypotheses based on the evidence you found will play out within the simulation. So take a deep breath and let the citizens hear your description of what happened. Here goes. Oh boy. This is the secret basement room found hidden beneath the professor's house. Its existence was even kept hidden from the administration bureau. This is where the professor carried out his research on the marionette Cistelia. The marionette's nature is closer to that of a variant than that of a human. It appears they were an attempt by the professor to artificially construct a variant. They were here until the morning of the incident. Why are they missing now, you ask? Allow me to reconstruct the marionette's movements on that fateful morning. Oh, wow. Cistelia awoke at seven that morning. Yes, at the exact time the clock tower bell rang out. The marionette likely intended to harm the professor from the outset. The proof lies is in the fact that the murder weapon is missing from this room. So, what did Cistelia use to murder the professor with? Time to trace the culprit's movements. That's so cool. Clearly. A pruning knife used on the plant. It's certainly a perfect match for the wound. I'm betting the marionette took a weapon and left the room of its own accord. Next, the marionette headed for the lab, where the professor was eventually killed. That day, the lab was shut, and admittance to the lab was strictly regulated. However, access to the lab from the underground room is possible without alerting anyone. Time to examine the door and move to the lab. We have also, like, some additional stuff. The problem is that this would explode. But she turned it off? Okay, well, maybe I'm overthinking it. <laughs> I see. Well, I guess we just progress, right? I see. The marionette Cestelia. They then headed to the hall from the door that connects to the bedroom. And to hide all trace of their visit, destroyed the access panel. Then they entered the lab. So that must be when the access panel was destroyed. I'm sure the professor must have been startled by the intruder. Cistelia approached the professor and attacked him with the weapon. Stabby, stabby. The professor was stabbed in the left side of his chest with a knife and died of his wounds. Well, that correlates with the results from the scan of the corpse. Hold on. Was that really the way the body was facing? <sighs> That's how they used the hidden door to access the lab and kill the professor. Why? I think that was the moment we, yeah, missed the evidence. The door to the lab was later unlocked at 8, when Mr. Tozaki discovered the crime scene. Cistelia then fled through the open door. Bye, bitch. It's highly likely that the marionette is still in possession of the murder weapon. 
Wait, not to think of it. Who hid the body? Their whereabouts are still unknown. It certainly seems plausible. But what about the professor's body? I haven't finished my explanation just yet. The professor's murderer and the person who hid his body were two different people. So, who hid the professor's body, you ask? That was you, Keith Tozaki. <laughs> really? What? Let's reconstruct the events of that morning after you spotted the marionette. Oh, uh, okay. After the marionette fled, Mr. Tozaki was left alone at the scene. He didn't want anyone to get the impression he was involved in the incident. Okay, I see that. So he quickly examined the scene and hatched a cover-up plan to hide the body. But then, someone entirely unexpected appeared. The professor's friend, Martha Simmons, being spotted would sink his cover-up plan. So he hid and waited to see what would happen. In the end, the place he chose to hide was... Where? I'll choose somewhere I won't be seen. I mean... Excuse me? Could this be it? Keith Tozaki headed for... Behind the door to the underground room that had been left ajar. That checks out. You'd have a hard time finding someone there. And that's why there was no sign of him when Ms. Simmons discovered the professor's body. But he still wasn't in a position to hide the body. He had to divert Miss Simmons' attention away from the body. So what? Oh, it's the vase. Okay. With that objective in mind, he headed for the bedroom. I was confused about it. <laughs> After discovering the body, Martha Simmons heard a noise coming from the bedroom and left the crime scene. The source of that noise was... I think they'll understand straight away if I actually play them the sound. Keith Tozaki. Through the vase to draw Martha Simmons' attention. Why, but then it was repaired. Hold on. Does that match with the witness's description of the noise? <sighs> and that's how he lured her out of the lab and into the bedroom. Damn it. I'm screwing up. He passed through the underground room again and headed back to the lab for the body. By hiding the corpse, he was leaving only minimal traces of the crime at the scene. Once he arrived in the underground room, he placed the body in the empty biological pod. After that, he left the bedroom and headed for the hall. He moved swiftly to ensure he went undetected while he was... I guess. To avoid being seen by Miss Simmons, he headed for the entrance door. That's how he escaped from the crime scene. That sums up my account regarding the missing body. I'm not happy with how that went. <laughs> that is everything that happened. No. Keith Tozaki may have attempted a cover-up of the incident at the crime scene, but he is not responsible for the professor's murder. No. The culprit is the professor's very own research subject, Cistelia, and they're still out there, somewhere in the city. Hmm.
Yeah. Your reconstruction is deeply flawed. I simply cannot accept your account. Hal, keep your cool. Try and recall the information you uncovered. Hal, get your act together, man. You gotta remember what you saw at the crime scene. Hal, are you sure that's enough? You don't think he's the killer, right? You gotta take a deep breath and try and remember what you saw at the crime scene, man. I have to do something. I need to get back to the tribunal. Okay, so I just need more percentage than him. I'm not sure why I chose this door. She clearly left here. I just need to focus. Excuse me. The marionette Cecilia headed to the scene of the crime via the door leading to the lab. Well, that definitely explains why they weren't in the access registry. There is a plant that grows in response to the presence of ion particles in the lab. The faint trace of particles given off by the marionette triggered the plant's abnormal growth. You often see plants like that out in the eastern desert. You can see how bad contamination is getting based on how the plant's doing. Pretty neat. I'm sure the professor must have been startled by the intruder. Cistelia approached the professor and attacked him with the weapon. hi -ya! The professor was stabbed in the left side of his chest with a knife and died of his wounds. Well, that correlates with the results from the scan of the corpse. Why I didn't... I just need to think, that's it. <laughs> the orientation of the corpse matches up perfectly with your account. That's how they use the hidden door to access the lab and kill the professor. A freak only means one thing, like the music. Because the vase was in one piece. Oh, definitely. <laughs> Keith Tozaki used the gramophone to draw Martha Simmons' attention. You're right. It definitely does sound like a shriek. And that's how he lured her out of the lab and into the bedroom. And he destroyed the panel. He destroyed the panel using his prosthetic left arm. Then... <laughs> Why can I enter again? Okay, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy now. While Miss Simmons was looking for the missing body, he snuck out through the entrance door. That's how he escaped from the crime scene. That sums up my account regarding a missing body. That is everything that happened on the morning of the incident. Well, not everything, because we don't have 100% thing. I think it's still possible. <laughs> okay. That was an exquisite reconstruction. It's as if you saw the events with your own two eyes. The problem, however, is that we have many more proofs that we gathered all across the case. We did not use them, so it means we don't need everything? I don't know, like, it's a little bit confusing, but we're good. <laughs> but then again, there's no, like, different ending, because it forces us out from the tribal now, so let's go. We accept the supervisor's testimony. We hereby indict Cestelia as a suspect in the murder of Professor Albert Rumford. Use of firearms is approved. Supervisors, your orders are to terminate the suspect on site. Oh, damn. That concludes this public trial. That was drastic. Eustace. How? I must say you certainly distinguished yourself. You've brought to light every aspect of the case, even those perhaps left uncovered. You wanted to keep the marionette's existence a secret, didn't you? Uncovered? Okay. <laughs> Why? 
Remember, the people don't want the truth. They want the illusion of tranquility. They leave governance to me, so they can go on living in blissful ignorance. How can they be happy like that? Living in a dream world, not facing up to reality. <laughs> Welcome to virtual reality. This system you've created, it's nothing but smoke and mirrors. Hmm. Are you sure you'll be able to bear the weight of reality? You intrigue me, Hal. For that, I'm going to share a little piece of information with you. Oh. Well, without further ado, in time you would have found out anyway. So allow me to tell you in advance. We were aware of the marionette Cestelia's existence. I knew. Huh? You knew about them? The marionette is the result of a joint research project between the professor and I. We built it 12 years ago to use in an experiment. The marionette is a copy of a variant that was cooperating with our research at the time. They were also used in the experiment Albert carried out three years ago. Likewise, in the experiments to test and refine augmented dreaming functionality. So it was just another lab rat. Like me and the others. You could say so. It was put into the care of the Bureau after the experiment. However, when it awoke, it slaughtered the officers guarding it and went into hiding. Bafflingly, it returned once again to the Professor. You played dumb? because it's a confidential matter in your dealings with the other cities. I'm guessing you knew about this too, Director General? I did. <laughs> Amazing. And the missing data in the underground lab? Yes, that was my order. The marionette is a strictly classified asset. It must be kept secret from the residents. The relevant dossier is classified, but I've granted you access. But now everyone knows, so what's the point? The marionette is a threat to the city. You must not approach them. Destroy them. Before speaking to it, before even making eye contact. Hmm... I'm not sure about that.